Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to tonight's live stream. I am so, so excited to create an amazing game with you guys tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am Quinn, a coding wizard here at Codeverse. And you guys are all going to be my apprentices uh, today as we create a super awesome game. So before we get started, I just kind of want to show you kind of what you're seeing and talk about kind of what we'll be doing today. So over on the, the right side of your screen, you're going to see your our interactive chat feature. This will allow you to participate, answer some questions, uh, and say hello. A lot of you have already been using it uh, in the waiting room and it's so amazing to see those suggestions come in. So uh, as all night long, please uh, type, 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 type away. Uh, and parents, don't worry, uh, that comment section is monitored. So um, everyone, uh, add your suggestions in there, but we don't need to go crazy, all right? <laughs> um, so we're about to get started. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today on St. Patrick's Day. So this game is going to do a little bit of... Um, a little St. Patrick's Day luck, but also prepare us for the uh, holiday on April 1st, known as April Fool's Day. So this game will not only be based on luck, but it'll also be a great game to trick and fool your friends as well. Ugh, Quinn, stop talking! Uh, and let's get into the game. All right, let's code. And just like that, I am super tiny on your screen. Hello, everyone. Um, so for those of you who haven't logged in to the Codeverse Studio yet, here is your dashboard. Uh, and we're just going to start today by creating a new project. So I already kind of prepped a little bit for our class today. So as you can see, uh, in our game over here, we have our setup for level one, level two, level three, um, and our title. Um, I did that by creating three, well, actually four different la labels and uh, sections in here. Um, but you know what? I set the background color to be purple. I want your opinion right now. So I'm going to set this TikTok clock going. And in the chat, can you give me a suggestion for what color you want the background color of this game? And I might use a few of your other colors to change the colors of these level markers here. So go ahead. I'll start the TikTok clock going now. All right, I'm seeing colors coming and we're gonna do orange. Okay, I love, love me some orange. So if you noticed, what I'm doing is I'm changing the color, um, the RGB color up at the top. So to get orange, I'm actually gonna add a little bit of red, a little bit of green, and no blue. So let's see what that looks like when I, oh, I love that. Great color suggestions, okay. Uh, what other suggestions do I have in there? Pink, amazing. So instead of typing all of this crazy code in, you can also click on any object in your game and adjust the color that way. So I'll do that with the uh, pink and yellow and blue, perfect. So I'll click on my first rectangle here. I'll go to body color and I'll go to this lovely little picker here and I'll scroll over, get a nice little pink color. Lovely, lovely. And get the other one, it's yellow. And then I can also do what I was doing before with those RGB colors from this by using uh, our slider. So if you notice right now it's at zero, 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 and we're gonna get blue. So we'll take this B and we'll increase it up to blue. Oh my goodness. Look at that game, so colorful. Let's get started. So this is going to be in our, um, kind of the behind the scenes document, our head.ks. And I'm gonna switch over into main. <gasps> but Quinn, where did all the code go? Oh, no. Don't worry, it's still there. Um, it's basically like having, um, like a, like two different documents, uh, like a window almost, like what's in the foreground, what's in the background. What we created uh, in our game right now is the background. Now let's add the foreground. So in this game, we're gonna create a bunch of buttons that each level will increase. One button per level will be the correct answer and the other buttons will be the wrong answer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our game by adding these buttons. So we can add our our object variables in by typing or by going into our library. So let's start by doing that. 
And let's go over and let's see if we can find, there it is, our push button. So we're gonna click on it and drag it into our game. And just like that, we have one button added in. Now, I'm gonna do a lot of dragging because we're gonna have two buttons for level one, three buttons for level two, and four for level three. Oh my goodness. So while I add the rest of these buttons in, I need you to make a suggestion. We need um, we need a character in our game to wish us luck. Um, they'll be they'll be cheering us on along the way, or they'll tell us when we're right or when we're wrong. So uh, in the in the comments now, can you give me a suggestion? Like who's the main character of our game that's cheering us along? Is it a a dog, a cat, a rabbit, a sloth? Who's the one cheering us on while I drag these buttons into our game? I'll start the tick tock clock now. Oh, I love seeing your suggestions come in. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing a lot of, yes, I'm seeing a lot of dogs come in. <coughs> and I'm also seeing, <laughs> you guys are creative. Okay, you know what? Let's go with a dog, but we'll make it a little interesting and go with one of our special Codeverse, uh, Codeverse characters, the space dog. So uh, to add our space dog in, instead of going into our library, I'll show you how you can do that by typing code. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna create a new line of code by clicking on any line of code and clicking enter or return on your keyboard. That'll create that new line of code. <laughs> and we can type in our import. So I'll type in I for import, and just like that, the computer's already helping us. It goes, hey, Quinn, did you know that, are you, are you, are you trying to import something? I'm like, computer, yes, yes I am. We'll click on that import, and then we have the option to choose from all of our over 200 objects from the Codeverse Studio. So I'm gonna add in our space dog. Um, but, but where's the space dog? It shouldn't it be in our game? Well. In the chat, what do you notice that's different from our push buttons and our space dog? What what are we missing? What are we what are we missing? Let's see, if we look at the other ones, like we have we have all of our rectangles here and we have our imports. Yes, we have some very, very, very astute people in the chat today. We're missing a variable for our space dog. So we're gonna create that variable by typing var short for variable, and space dog. And eh, you know what? That's not fun. What should we name our space dog? Quick, quick round. Space dog, what's a name? What's a name? Yes, okay. Billy Bob Joe, the space dog. I love it. All right, and we're gonna add our space dog in the bottom left corner of our game. So we do that by creating an X and a Y coordinate for our space dog. The further we are to the left side of our screen, the closer we are to the coordinate zero. If we're all the way on the right side, the closer we are to the coordinate 100. So because we want our space dog in the left, we want our uh, X coordinate to be, yes, 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 closer to zero. So let's try 20. And for Y, uh, think of it from top to bottom. So the very tippity top of your screen is zero and all the way at the bottom is 100. Um, a good way to remember that is say you're eating your favorite food, um, like, uh, like pizza, yes, pizza. And if you have one slice of pizza, oh, you're totally fine, you're jumping up and down. But if you have 100 slices of pizza, Oh, you're gonna be laying down on the bed, the couch, oh, you're not going no. anywhere for a while. So the bigger that number, the closer you are to the bottom. So let's try 90. Oh, look at that. There's our space dog in the bottom left corner of our game, just like we said he was. Now, if uh, you wanted to see these numbers kind of change in action, you can always click on your object and move it around. And notice as I move it to the right, we have these lovely little barriers that show up at the top that tell us that in the top left corner, that's zero, zero. All the way to the right is 100, and all the way to the bottom is 100. So we have our space dog here. 
we're going to make him a little bit bigger by adding a method onto our space dog. A method is a way that we can adjust any of the variables in our game. So we're going to make our space dog bigger by clicking on this box here and dragging it bigger. And we'll just have his head. We just we just want him there for uh, for support. <coughs> um, so I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to kind of rearrange our uh, buttons so they're a little bit more level. But while I do that, I want some suggestions in the comments on how we can customize our dog. So we can remove the helmet, we can change its mouth type, we can change its eyes type, we can change its body color, we can change its collar color. So let's throw those suggestions in, um, send those uh, comments, those chat comments in. Um, and yes, let me know, let me know what you're thinking. All right. And the timer goes now. All right. We're seeing more of these colors coming in. Oh my goodness. One of the comments just said, make him a cat. <laughs> okay, great. Oh my goodness. You guys are really, really good in the chat today. So um, let's change some methods by tapping on our object and by typing that code. So let's click on our dog and let's see what, what's the first thing that we can do. Ooh, we can change the body color. So I saw someone say, ooh, make him a a purple space dog. So let's let's make it a, let's make a purple dog here. Oh my goodness, look at that. And I saw a suggestion to hide the helmet. So let's let's try this method by typing. So we'll click at the end over here, make that new line of code, and we'll hide the helmet on our variable Billy Bob Joe. So we'll type B for Billy. I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see it. I'll type B for Billy. The computer already knows, so we'll click on it. And then we'll add in our method with a magic method dot. Just like that, the computer is helping us out again with over 70 different methods to uh, customize Billy Bob Joe. So we're going to hide the helmet here. Oh my goodness, Billy Bob Joe, you look amazing. So right now our game <gasps> is set, but, but where'd Billy Bob Joe go? Billy Bob, come back. Oh my goodness. So we have to make sure that Billy Bob Joe stays. So we have to set our space dog to be fixed. We can do that by typing in our method or scrolling over here and setting this fixed variable to be true. So now when we click run, there we go. Billy Bob Joe's not going anywhere. So let's play our game. No, nothing is, nothing's happening. Well, that's not fun. <laughs> So let's actually make things happen in our game by creating what we call events. So we have variables. Variables are uh, objects in our game. We have methods to change those variables and then events to make those variables uh, do things. Because uh, right now we have a lovely picture and that's not doing much for us. So we're going to start this game by uh, choosing which button in each level will uh, be the correct one and which ones will be the incorrect ones. So um, go ahead in the chat, let me know which button for level one is the correct button, one or two. All right, we're gonna do, looks like level one is gonna be two from the chat. All right, and we're, uh, level two, uh, which one is correct for level two? And while we're at it, what's, what's level three? All right, it looks like it's two, one, and four. Amazing. Um, if you ever create uh, one of these games, you as the game designer know the secret answers. You uh, you have the cheat sheet, but everyone else has to guess, and they have to be uh, be lucky to get the right answer. So now that we know that level one, uh, the correct answer for level one is button two, um, let's go ahead and let's actually hide the buttons for level two and level three. So when you get the answer correct, they show. So we'll do that by either tapping on the variable and hiding it or going over here and adding those methods in. I think it'll be faster for me to do that. So I'll say, okay, uh, push button two dot hide. And just like that, it's gone. Uh, we're gonna do that for the remaining um, buttons that we have here. 
So we have uh, two, three, and four. <gasps> They're gone. And then we'll do the same thing for five, six, seven, eight. So we'll do five, six, seven, eight. Just like that, our game is all set. And it's time to add in our luck and our coding mischief. All right, so we know that for level one, we want answer two to be correct. So we're gonna create that first when statement. We'll do that by typing a W for when. And which button is our second button? It looks like that would be push button one. Um, you may be wondering, Quinn, how do I know that? Ooh. Well, that's because the X coordinate is closer to the right, or it's a larger number, closer to 100. Uh, if you didn't, didn't know that by looking at the X coordinate, totally fine. Uh, you can click on the object and it'll always highlight that line in your code. So I know that push button one is the correct answer. So I'll say when push button one is tapped, we want uh, all of the buttons from level two to show. So I'm gonna, you didn't see that. You didn't Ooh. see that. Uh, we're gonna have our buttons show. So let's let's see what that looks like. Let's run the game. Boom. <gasps> Amazing. We're on level two. We're doing great. But what happens if I click button one? Well, nothing. But then how do I lose this game? Exactly. Great idea. So um, we are going to add in two elements here to let us know when we've lost. So we're going to start with a label for our dog to speak to us. So we're gonna add our label in. I went to the library, gonna click and drag it in, put it right by our space dog. There it is. And we're gonna set the text of our label. So what should our label say when we start the game? Um, and then what should our label say when we lose or we get tricked? So I'm gonna start the TikTok clock and let me know um, what is going, the, our label's gonna say at the start and when we lose. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna set up a similar when statement uh, for the correct answers uh, for level two into level three. All right, TikTok clock is starting now. Right. All right. Nice. Amazing. So um, it looks like a lot of you wanted uh, our space dog to say hi at the start. Great idea. So we'll set the text of our label by adding a method onto our label. So we'll say label one dot set text. Hi. Just like that. Our space dog saying hi to us. Hi, space dog. How's it going? Uh, and while uh, while you were giving those suggestions, I went ahead and coded in that once you click level two, these will show. And same thing with level three. But we have yet to code what happens when we get something wrong. So what I'm going to teach you now is something that is a little bit more advanced and something that you can uh, learn about when you book your free trial um, with one of our amazing coding guides. Um, you'll walk through a process one-on-one -on -one with them, 50 minutes. It's not just you participating, you're the one actively coding. It is the best, best way for you guys to be successful in your coding journeys and create games like this. So um, this next concept that I'm going to talk about is a little bit more advanced, but you'll get there in no time when you book that free trial. Um, so uh, down at the bottom of the screen, uh, you'll see this little banner that's gonna pop up and it'll be for you to book that trial. But stay here, please stay here. We gotta finish our game. Uh, but once we're done, book that trial and uh, I can't wait to see what you code there. But um, that thing I'm talking about right now, that more advanced thing is what we call a message bus. Uh, think of it like a fancy bus that can take you anywhere you wanna go. Um, we can use this to create one of those events, those when statements that we created earlier for all the answers that we get wrong. 
So just like we did any of our other variables, we're gonna create a variable for our message bus and we'll call it bus, why not? And then we'll code a when statement for when we get our answers wrong. So we know for level one that our push button one is the correct answer, but we should code a when statement for when our first push button is tapped. And we'll say bus dot trigger wrong. So when we tap it, um, we'll create a trigger when statement for that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the remaining buttons. But when I do that, I need a couple of suggestions from this chat again. So I need to know what will our dog say when we get the answer wrong? Um, and then what's something I don't know, silly or something you maybe don't want to see when you get something wrong that fills up the entire screen. Um, something that's like a little, like a little trick to play. Like, um, I don't know, there's a couple objects within the library that could maybe appear on the screen and be a little silly. And um, what do you think should pop up when you, when you get an answer wrong? I'll start the TikTok clock. We need uh, things for our dogs to say and a, a silly thing to pop up when we get it wrong, when we get tricked. All right, and go. You guys are really active in the chat today. It's amazing. All right. Oh, I'll extend the timer just a little bit more. <laughs> Get those suggestions in. <laughs> All right. So it looks like you guys want our space dog to bark and go rough, no, wrong. Um, so let's add that in. So we coded all of these um, wrong statements. So when we tap the wrong button, our message bus is going to drive us along beep, beep, uh, to our new when statement that you guys were just suggesting. So we'll say, hey, when our bus triggers wrong, we'll have that label, just like you guys suggested. Set the text, woof. <coughs> you are wrong. So let's see what that looks like. If I tap this first one, oh my goodness, we're wrong. And then for the silly part, we're gonna do it. We're gonna add a big piece of poo that fills up our screen. Oh my goodness. Uh, so when we get the answer wrong, um, I think that's a, a very nasty trick to play. Um, we're gonna add a giant emoji poo that fills up the screen when we get the answer wrong. But right now, if we get it wrong, it's, it's just a tiny little poo. So let's set the size of our poo to cover our screen. So um, just like we did before, when we added a method to change the, the size of our objects, we'll do the same thing here with that magic method dot. And we'll set the size to be, well, let's try 400. Let's see what that looks like. Oh no, we can do better than that. Let's try 800. Yep, that's it. That is the one. <laughs> Oh my goodness, y'all, what are we creating? Your creative minds are making this happen. Okay, so uh, when we get the answer wrong, that's what will appear. So we know uh, for the first answer, we go into the, the correct answer is the second button. And then we know that the correct answer for the second level is the, the, the first button, right? Yep. And then the last level is the fourth button. Huh? Oh, but, but we didn't create something that wins the game yet. So in the comments, the last thing we need, what is going to happen when we win the game? Any suggestions? We can, um, seems fitting for, yes, seems fitting for St. Patrick's Day. We can add in a clover. Um, yeah, what else? Um, yes, ooh, sound effects, I love it. And some, some colors. Oh my goodness, I love all of these suggestions. Let's, let's do it, let's add in. Um, Let's add in those sound effects. Uh, let's change our label for our dog and let's add in that shamrock. So um, I'm going to create 
Um, inside our winning when statement, that's this one right here. Let's add our shamrock in here. So our plants. And let's have it appear right over here. And maybe we make that a little bit bigger as well. And then we also wanted those sound effects. So I'll go up here, look at our utilities. There's our sound effects. Now, uh, as you notice, the sound effects isn't uh, an object in our game, so we don't see it, but we can still add a method to it. So let's see, um, what's a good, let's see, let's play, um, let's play a good, like a confirmation sound, yeah. Let's see what that sounds like. We'll go. So we got a uh, two, one, four. Ooh, that was fun. Um, let's 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 keep it. What? Why not? Um, and then two, two. Oh no! I got the answer wrong again. Um, so what's a what's something we should do? Um, we're, we're running. We're almost out of time here. But what are a couple things that we can add here to make that a uh, that poo uh, a little bit more, a little bit more silly. It makes us uh, feel bad for getting the answer wrong. What do you think, Em? Okay, another sound effect. Oh my goodness, make this, make this space dog explode. Okay. Um, and spin, okay, I love it, I love it. So uh, inside our when statement for when we uh, got, get our answer wrong, let's add in that uh, sound effect for, um, getting the answer wrong. Let's do, ooh, is there, a, is there a voice that can just say wrong or something? Let's see. Um, ooh, that's it. That's it. Just loser. <laughs> and we said that the space dog, uh, our Billy Bob Joe, would explode. Poor Billy Bob Joe. And let's have our poo, let's just have our poo spin around. That's in a really fast speed. All right, let's try it out. So uh, level one. Uh, I got it right. Level two. Loser. Oh no, we are wrong. Uh, and then the, this poo is gonna taunt me all night, y'all. Uh, let's see if we get it all right. So it was uh, two, one, four. There it is, we got it right. And uh, just really quickly, let's have our label for our dog say that we win. Yay! And just like that, we created an amazing game together. You guys, your suggestions were really good. I mean, loser. I would have never, ever come up with this. A spinning poo that says loser? Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, just as a reminder, you can create awesome games like this uh, with that free trial with your guide. So we only had 30 minutes today, and it was me and a bunch of you guys. But imagine what you can create when you have... 50 minutes and it's you and one of our other expert guides. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, super, super easy to book that free trial. It's free and you can create games like this. Um, or for that first session, you can even play the game we created today. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna publish this game to the Community One uh, profile and you can play that game. So um, when you log in, be it with your guide or right after today's session, um, you can follow Community One by going up to Create New, Friend, and adding Community One here. When you're there, you'll be able to view Community One's profile and see all of the published games in their uh, in in my uh, published game section. So you'll see the, uh, the 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 live stream game we did last week, uh, and then the one we have this week as well. Um, it was super awesome creating this game with you guys today. Um, I really can't wait to see what silly, crazy games you create because your suggestions were truly out of this world and a little stinky if you ask me. <laughs> um, but thank you guys again so much for coming and for all of your amazing uh, suggestions in the chat and even um, your ability and your uh, your uh, your camaraderie with your peers. Uh, I saw a lot of you guys uh, mentioning that, uh, to follow one another. So I, I just su suggested that you can follow Community One, but you can also follow any uh, any of your other peers in your, your Codeverse community as well. So uh, give some of your friends a new follow, uh, follow Community One, also follow Codeverse one uh, for to stay up to date on all of our amazing uh, updates and product launches and things like that. Um, but again, uh, I can't wait to see what you create. Uh, thank you so much for coming today. 
book that free trial. I want to see the games you create. I can't, can't wait. And uh, hey, you don't want to be a loser. Oh my goodness. So book that free trial so you can be a winner. Oh my goodness. You guys are the best. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy early uh, April Fool's Day. Uh, and like always, I will see you on Codeverse. But before I go, parents, I just wanted to show you one more way to book that free trial. So you can either click the banner right below me now, or you can book that free trial session from your parent portal at any time. Simply click on the book a free class button, choose the kid you wanna book a free trial for, and choose from any upcoming dates and times. This will set them up with one of our amazing expert coding guides, uh, and your kid will create their very first game within those 50 minutes and uh, your guide will show you how to share it to all of your friends and how to create more. Um, it is truly the best way to progress in our platform and create such amazing creations. Thank you again so much for coming today and happy St. Patrick's Day, happy Thursday, happy happy. <laughs> I'll see you in Codeverse.